what do vampires never order at a restaurant? A steak dinner. What's going on, YouTube? We're inside the Hollow City, inside of Cold Harbor, outside the plane of existence to go over our first of two vendors. Now, we have a couple items here that are potentially very good. We're going to quickly just go through all these so you can see them on screen and remind you guys why we're breaking down the items in these two ways. So the first one is going to be if you want to purchase them for yourself, obviously that's a bit more subjective. And then the second reason is, is that objectively, some of these will retain value or go up in value over time. These two banners, the Anvil banner is not known for being a very popular area in ESO. I would generally skip these 4,000 for a big banner, though. It's a pretty good deal. 2,500 for some vampiric-themed candles, though, is actually a pretty good deal, especially with all the Halloween-themed events. You can uh, submit screenshots to Zenimax, you know, with their different prompts for Halloween stuff. 2,500 gold, good value for that. Then you've got this big boy item right here. This used to be like the creme de la creme of wait for this to be in the luxury vendor and then resell it in the future. Unfortunately, as watching the golden vendor and luxury vendor has become more popular, I don't think you're going to make as much value because people used to sell these for a quarter million gold. Uh, so you could buy 10 of these and potentially see a 1.5 million gold profit if you waited a few months. You certainly still will see a profit. I don't think it will be nearly as much just because I'm being honest. Thousands of people watch these. There's going to be a higher increase. People are going to know that this item is here. Second thing is uh, we have our two ver the two vendor uh, items here we have next are the tapestries. I do like the Brotherhood tapestries, but I don't necessarily think that people are out searching for these. This cool-ass door, though, per fits perfectly with the Halloween theme. A lot of people love the Dark Brotherhood. The sanctuary-themed home is very, very cool. We have the door of the Sweet Mother, which is also pretty cool. I wish these two doors would open. Then we've got the Fountain Wolf Head, uh, which we you know why this is popular in ESO. You know, the ESO community loves us some wolves. You know why. And uh, I think this is a new item. I've not seen this before. This definitely has quite a bit of value. For 40000 it's a good potential pickup. Then we finish with two hourglasses, which I'm a bit unsold on because you don't see the time inside of it but they're both really good items this is actually one of the best luxury furnishing vendors based on how thematic it is to halloween uh you just take this door for example if you're submitting this into a screenshot you know um contest that zenimax is hosting on twitter you just add some couple decorations behind it in your house and bada bing bada boom you're pretty much good to go with the halloween themes and these 2500 gold candles and this amazing item that people used to get rich off of it's a, good, it's a good weekend for the luxury vendor. And before we jump into the second video here, if you guys wouldn't mind, just hit the like and subscribe button. I do the fastest YouTube intros for ESO, I think, uh, minus the puns. Sorry, those don't count. That's quality content. If you do, don't mind, though, I try to get at least 3 to 5% from views to likes. Uh, so if you don't mind, hit the like button. Let's jump into the next one, because let me tell you, there's some cooked items in here. And restart with Locket of the Pariah, which is one of the best, if not the best, current defense set for PvP. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking to yourself right now, you might even be typing it in the comments below. Jake, why would I want to get this when I can just go farm the Pariah Necklace and upgrade it with all my plates that I have? Well, good luck, dear friend, getting a purple necklace of Pariah because Pariah doesn't have a world event for you to farm. You might be thinking to yourself, what? Yeah, so when Rothgar came out, there was no world events. Malag Ball's not invading there. There's no dragons. There's no Hera Storms, etc., etc., meaning the only way that you can get these sets from there is through random drops, most commonly with chest farming or doing daily quests, both of which, which don't occur very often. And normally, the supply for Pariah is not super high, but you also have to remember now, we have a PvP update coming. This potentially is actually a really good item to try to flip for the PvP update, especially if you're like me and you have like tons of AP across multiple characters. Throw some AP into this and see if you could just convert it into some gold because people are going to be needing a good defense set. And other defensive sets like Iron Blood have been notably nerfed into the ground. So, what defensive sets are left? And you have Pariah. Even being a vampire was nerfed. So, people need a little more junk in the trunk. And this is the drunk, the don't, the drunk in the trunk, or <laughs> going. But this is a good item. Next up, we have Magicka Furnace, which I actually don't know if this, if you would consider this a nerf or a buff, but this drops from Direfrost's Keep, 
When you take damage, when you're under 50% Magicka, you can restore 7,590 Magicka. This can occur once every 30 seconds. This used to proc at, I think, 80% or 70%, which notably sometimes will cause you to overcap with your Magicka. So I don't know if you would consider that a buff or a nerf. It's more of just like a change. I actually think it's probably more positive. However, in today's day and age, you would look at this as probably a PvP sustained set. It gives you armor, Magicka, weapon and spell damage which sure you might be able to use for some PvE content, but if you did use this in PvP, 30 seconds is a long time, and let's be realistic, there's so many heavy attack builds, if you needed to sustain, you just start heavy attacking with a lightning staff, and you'll probably be fine. Next up, from March of Sacrifice, we have the Yursus set, You or Sus. Now, when you take damage while under 50% health, you summon Yursus' spirit for 6 seconds at a random group member, you or a random group member can activate a synergy on them and grant a damage shield that protects you and up to six group members within a 28 meter radius, which is huge, uh, from 8,031 damage for six seconds. This can occur once every 10 seconds. This reminds me of another set, uh, Brands of Imperium, which actually I think was in the vendor, what, one or two weeks ago? And I had noted that people use that set oftentimes if they're trying to do like perfection runs, you know, uh, if they don't want to die accidentally on some stupid mechanic, sometimes they'll run like Brands of Imperium. That way they can get basically extra tanky shields that, you know, the DPS doesn't accidentally step off somewhere, step at a poison, you know, for an extra second, and then boom, they're dead. Um, so this is a perfectly serviceable set for something like that. Um, getting a synergy can be helpful. Resource sustain six members is weird, um, just because... It's, you know, it's not four people, which would be a dungeon group. It's not a trial group size. That's just weird. Six group members is such a weird, <laughs> weird grouping of people. Um, but overall, I think this is perfectly fine. I don't think that you would need to go out and get this as a gold set. But if you were looking at sets that don't require any DLCs and you're like, Jake, you know, I want to have a decent set that I can, you know, keep my group members from dying. We're trying to run some dungeons, which... You can run those dungeons. You probably have access to DLC, which gives you better access to certain sets. But let's just pretend that that logic doesn't exist. This is a perfectly serviceable set. It's like a B. It's like a B tier set, you know, for what it's trying to do. It's not an A tier. It's definitely not an S tier, but it's a good B tier set. Next up, we have one of my old favorite sets, Seventh Legion. When you cast an ability that grants major or minor resolve while in combat, you gain 341 weapon and spell damage, 341 health recovery for 15 seconds. This can occur. 15 seconds now this is a very easy thing to proc obviously and it's a pretty good set so why is this set not good because it's a pvp focus set why is this set not as good to flip versus pariah well the answer is actually relatively straightforward this set drops from bankerai now bankerai is right here on your map and you'll notice it's being invaded you'll be able to find dolmens inside of bankerai now dolmens drop this thing called jewelry and jewelry can be upgraded now super cheaply, meaning that people can actually get the purple version of this relatively quickly. And in fact, events like the upcoming Witches Festival, people like to farm this trifecta here, this Bermuda Triangle, except the only victims in this Bermuda Triangle are these three world bosses and sometimes this dolmen. They're going to farm this to death, meaning that this set is going to be everywhere on the market. And even though it's a good serviceable PvP set, you're going to see an uptick in supply and demand for it. The supply is going to be greatly outweighed based on this, especially after the Witches event. So it's a great set. If you want to wait to purchase it, I would say wait until then and you'll be able to get yourself a good deal on it. It's a good set. I said it's like an A-tier set, but don't buy it in its golden form. Next up from Unhallowed Grave is Kajolnir's. You may remember this set because we actually farmed for the style page of this, and one of my friends got it, didn't tell any of us until we saw it on the open market. Thanks, Brandon. So we agreed initially to split any of the profits or anything that we would make off of uh, set farming these together, but whatever. Uh, this is the actual set that drops from there, not the style page. Does it stack up? Well, you get weapon and spell damage for your one piece. For your two-piece, damaging an enemy with a light attack puts a bone stack on them for five seconds, up to once every half second. At five stacks, an undodgeable skeletal hand attacks your enemy after one second, knocking them into the air and stunning them for three seconds, or dealing 15,724 magic of damage. If the enemy cannot be stunned, enemies then become immune to Cajol's uh, stacks for four seconds, 
this scales off your weapon or spell damage. This is good damage, easy to proc, light attacking is easy. The only problem with this set is just that there are other sets that are better. If you could do this, why wouldn't you just use Zons? Now, Zons is obviously great, but the problem is, is that if you're not the best monster set, oftentimes you're just the first loser, which is what the silver medalist is. And Kajolniers comes off as the silver medalist. It's a perfectly great monster set. If you wanted to use this as an excuse to get a set for a light or a heavy attack build, this is perfectly serviceable. If you don't want to go out and farm a different monster set, the DPS is not going to be much different. The problem is just going to be that technically it's not the best, and oftentimes that means it's, it's just not used. Also, you can just get this by farming Unhallowed Grave, and every, you know just by completing it on Veteran, you'll get a version of this. So I would say it's not worth the buy, but it's definitely one to consider. And we wrap off with a Moon Hunter keep set of Voxa. Uh, when you bash an enemy you taunt and you frighten them with a deafening howl, applying major cowardice to them, lowering their weapon and spell damage by 430 for 8 seconds. This can occur once every 15 seconds. This is a very niche, but definitely useful set to have if you are tanking certain trials applying major cowardice can be basically the difference between a risky hard mode or an easier hard mode so you will see this set actually do get used in high-end play the problem that this set suffers from is the uh the problem of you don't always really need to use me because you're not oftentimes needing to apply major cowardice only in situations where you really want to lower the DPS output do you even need to worry about using this set. So that's where this set suffers from. But what it's trying to do has a utilization and like most support sets are good to own. If you don't want to farm Moon Hunter Keep, you could certainly buy this. But I will always encourage you guys to just farm the dungeon on Veteran to get the Monster Mask. But it's up to you. It's a great support set if you're ever interested in any sort of tanking and likely it's good to have if you're into tanking specifically for uh, veteran trial content. And as we wrap up, shout out to you, Dire Blowfish, and also shout out to the guy that told me uh, to go get the Valendrone Hammer while I was recording this video. Uh, so thank you guys so much again. This has been another fantastic uh, Friday uh, weekend vendor for us. I'm most excited about the luxury furnishing vendor just because of all the potentials to make money, but I love Pariah. It's one of my favorite sets to use in the game. Thankfully, I've already got it golded out, but as we go into a PvP update, I definitely think that it's going to be one of the most recommended sets for people to slap on because everybody always says, oh, use two DPS sets and one defense set, and then you go to the Google and you're like, what's a good defense set? And you get like three options. So Hopefully it sees that uptick, potentially some good money to be made on the horizon, depending on how many people invest in it. But uh, thank you guys so much again. As always, we're doing our three giveaway drawings. All you have to do to enter is leave a comment in the comments below. Second thing is just make sure you're subscribed slash follow on Twitch and Twitter. And the third thing is look for a hidden word to be flashed upon the screen. If you're the first person to comment that word, you will win. Thank you guys one last time. I'll catch you tomorrow and I'll see you there. Bye guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you.